Jesus has like a ton of names, but around Easter time, I often think about one name in particular. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas, and hey, happy Easter. Yeah, and, and today I want to talk to you about one of Jesus' names. Did you know that Jesus had like a ton of names? Yeah, like a lot of them. Like, did you know that Jesus was called the Alpha and the Omega, and he was called Son of God and Son of Man, and, and he was called the I Am and, and Bread of Life and the Vine and the Chief Cornerstone and Great High Priest and Emmanuel, which means God with us, and King of Kings and Light of the World. He, he was called the Messiah. He is the Messiah, the Savior. He's the resurrection and the life, the door, the way, the truth, the word, the prince of peace, the lion of Judah, the good shepherd, and the lamb of God. And that, that's just to name a few. But today I wanted to talk to you about one in particular, and that is Jesus is known as the lamb of God. And, you know, if you were to ask people what animals remind them of Easter, it probably wouldn't be lamb. You know, like we have those chocolate bunnies or like those marshmallow baby chickens. But we don't really have like lambs that don't seem to be a big part of Easter. But but a lamb is absolutely what I think of when I think of Easter. When I think of Jesus' sacrifice, his death and resurrection, I totally think of a lamb. But it does seem weird that we would call Jesus the lamb of God when we also call him like the lion of Judah or or the good shepherd. Those both seem like opposites of a lamb, opposites of a little baby sheep. But lamb of God is one of the most important and significant titles that Jesus has. And here's why. Let's rewind to like a long, long, long time ago, all the way back in the book of Exodus. You've got God's people, the Israelites, were slaves in Egypt. And they were asking God, they, they were begging God to save them. And so he did. And in Egypt in those days, their king was called a pharaoh. And the pharaoh who, who was enslaving the Israelites, he was not going to let them go. But God sent plague after plague, like, like bad thing after bad thing. And not just bad thing, like miraculous bad stuff. But even after plague after plague, Pharaoh still did not let God's people go. And so God said that he was going to send a final plague. And this was going to be the biggest, baddest, worst plague. And he prepared the Israelites for it. He, and he said to prepare for this final plague... Every household has to sacrifice a perfect lamb and take the blood of that lamb and cover your doorposts because God was going to send an angel to come and kill the firstborn of every living thing in Egypt. But if that angel came to a house that had the blood of this lamb over its doorposts, then that angel would pass over their house. And to this day, the Israelites still celebrate what they call Passover, where they celebrate how God rescued them from Egypt and passed over their houses. Because yeah, that plague was big and bad and serious, and it, it was enough for Pharaoh to, to give up and let God's people go. Now fast forward a bit to about 2,000 years ago, and Jesus became, for us, our Passover lamb, the lamb of God. The lambs that they used at the first Passover, they had to be perfect, without flaw. Nothing wrong with them at all. And Jesus is not a literal lamb, but he is and was perfect. Everybody in the world has a really big problem, and that is that we're all sinners. Sin is anytime you do something bad, anytime you do something you're not supposed to do. And we've all sinned, and our sin separates us from God. The penalty for sin is eternal death, an eternity apart from God. And when we die, we pay that penalty. We take the punishment that we deserve. And that is to be destroyed by God in the way that God destroyed the firstborn in Egypt. But check this out. Jesus never sinned. Jesus is and was blameless and pure. He needed to pay no penalty for himself. He deserved no punishment. But Jesus offered himself as a sacrifice for our sins. When Jesus died on the cross, he took onto himself the sins of the world. And he paid the penalty for those sins. He took the punishment for those sins once and for all. And he was only able to do that because he is blameless and pure, just like the little lambs in the first Passover. And the blood of Jesus Christ the blood of the Lamb of God, 
covers us like like the blood of the lamb covered the doorposts in Egypt. And just like the blood of the lamb over the doorposts of the Israelites in Egypt, the blood of Jesus Christ saves us from the wrath of God. You see, here's the thing about God. God is merciful and loving, and he doesn't want anyone to perish. But he's also just. That means he does what's right. And if someone deserves to be punished, he's going to punish them. And we all deserve to be punished. But because of his love and his mercy, God made a way. God made a way for us to be saved, and that way is through the sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. So I really hope that this Easter, as you see all the, you know, chocolate bunnies and the little marshmallow baby chickens, that you'll also remember the lamb, the lamb of God and the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for you. And that you will remember that that in dying on the cross and raising again from the dead three days later, Jesus conquered sin and death to save you. Hey guys, I hope you liked this video. And hey, happy Easter. I really hope that you will believe in Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. It's the most important thing you can ever, ever do. And Easter is a great time to share the good news of Jesus Christ with everybody that you meet. Even at church, people need to be reminded what it is that we're celebrating on Easter. It's not bunnies, it's not chocolate, it's not candy, it's not eggs. It's the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for us. And celebrating that Jesus rose again from the dead three days later. He paid the ultimate sacrifice, but then he conquered death. What an amazing God we have. Jesus loves you, and he paid the ultimate sacrifice for you.